Well, hello and welcome to the House of Valentina. I'm Valentina and today we are gonna be talking about how to achieve a minimal luxury look even if you are working on a tight budget. I'm gonna give you tons of tips and tricks and I'm gonna share with you why this style is going to be taking over everything you're gonna be seeing in 2023. So you might as well get a head start. It's a style that I personally love. It's what I use in my own home and with my own clients. And what I love about this style is that you really can stretch your budget because you don't need as much. Even if you are a maximalist, I know you're gonna love the tips and tricks that I'm sharing today. So. Don't click off just yet. Stay tuned, hit subscribe and give the video a big thumbs up. That way you can see how we use this style in our own home and in so many projects we have coming up. I can't wait to share all those with you. So cheers you guys, let's jump in. I hope what you'll take away from today's video is that you don't have to own a lot of stuff to have something that looks really beautiful. And I wanna give you, I wanna empower you today to feel like this is something that's really achievable. A luxurious space is achievable for every single budget. And I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks that'll really help you to identify how to create this space, how to make good choices in your room, and how to achieve this even if you buy everything from Ikea and Amazon, you can still create a minimal luxury look. It's not about budget, it's about all the things that we're gonna talk about in just a second. The number one thing that I like to do is I really like to focus on quality over quantity. And that's really helpful, especially in this style. It's a key pillar of the style. Shopping for quality over quantity isn't about going to the most expensive stores and trying to find something that you can afford. It's about focusing in on what the quality item is and understanding that a, a well-made zipper will always last you longer on your pillows, buying good quality fabrics that aren't gonna tear and rip, uh, looking at the seams on the sofa and really buying a quality piece you can find some incredible quality at places like Ikea and Amazon. I do it all the time. That's why I love to share these things with you because I hope it will always empower you to create your beautiful home all around you with items that are going to really last you. But it's not gonna do you any good to buy a beautiful pillow that literally last for a week. We want you to have things that last you a really nice long time. And so I do try to focus on quality over quantity. I try to actually just have less things even out. So you don't need 90 pillows to fill the sofa. For me, I like to have the sofa maybe with two pillows, maybe three, and I just tend to have a little bit less. And so I'm able to spend a little bit more on the things that really matter and then you know identify even things from Amazon, like this pillow. It's from Amazon, but it's made really well. It's something that we can really sit on and live with, but it has a very luxurious feel to it because it's made of a beautiful fabric and these have just lasted me. I wanted to take just a moment and thank our video sponsor for today, which is Beam. My decor helps me a lot when it comes to getting a good night's sleep, but there's a couple other things that I do. I have a few nighttime rituals that I pretty much always abide by. <laughs> I slip into my silk pajamas. I love to take a late bath after everyone's gone to bed. I always wash my face and I have a nighttime ritual, but I was still struggling with actually sleeping well. And so I decided to give Beam's Dream Powder a try. And I have found this to be one of my favorite uh, luxuries because it's loaded with great ingredients that really help me sleep. And the best part is that it tastes delicious. I also love the fact that this is also very easy to use because let's face it, I'm a busy mom. I don't have time to do a bunch of stuff. So all you need is a little bit of warm milk and got that warmed and then a nice little scoop of chocolate. Chocolate cocoa, who doesn't like to have a cup of cocoa at the end of the day? Just give it a nice little froth. All right, so with just a few seconds invested in this, I have a, an amazing hot cocoa that is packed not only with vitamins, but also vitamins that are sleep inducing. So click below and use my code HOUSE to get 35% off your first order when you subscribe and then 20% off all following orders. Plus, when you subscribe to Dream Powder, you never have to pay for shipping and will receive a Beam mug and frother with your first order. You can pause, skip, or cancel anytime so there's no risk. It's available for new and existing customers. Thank you again to Beam for being today's video sponsor and cheers, you guys. Mm. Wowzers. So good. 
I need to be alone to finish my cup, okay? It's that good. I am, yeah. You just need to add this to your daily ritual. You'll love it. Another key aspect of minimal luxury is all about actually the architecture of your space. I think this is actually really overlooked for most people and it's something that we talked about a couple weeks ago when we were talking about how to not have a cookie cutter space and we talked about a lot of the techniques that I use that even when you don't have amazing architecture in your house, maybe you live in the suburbs and you don't have beams and lots of architectural features in your space, how to create architecture in your space that doesn't exist. But there's also another side of this, and that is actually just appreciating the architecture of the space itself and not having this need to fill every single last inch of a space, but to have breathing room and white space because you want to see the lines of a room. So you don't have to fill your space just because you can. I, I think that this is a, a really key aspect of this style and one that I think that gets overlooked probably a little too much. But I think appreciating the room that you have and the space that you have is key. So I suggest going through your house with your camera and just start to take pictures of your room from all four corners and identify what makes your room great and build a room around the architecture of the space that you've been given. So maybe you wanna play up if you have a nice tall fireplace like I do, or maybe you've got a, a bay window, or maybe you do have some beams, or maybe in one space you have a pitch on your ceiling or you have a tray that you wanna really play up. You can play up a lot of those architectural features to really make that space pop without having to fill it with a lot of stuff. You can also play down. If you have architectural features that aren't very nice, you can also minimize them. And then what you're doing is you're creating that minimal luxury style. And I do this a lot. I make a lot of things go away with paint. I make things come alive with paint and I make them go away with paint. So let's just say you have a really busy ornate wall and it's just so busy or, oh man, what I would say one of the biggest things that I deal with, because in our area we have a lot of homes that were built in the 90s. We have a lot of sponged walls and they literally just sponge the, everything. <laughs> <laughs> and when you silence all of that busyness, you really just start to see the architecture of the space. And that was one of the things that when I started to take over this house that people really saw afterwards was that by painting every this room out completely in white, adding some accents around the space, you really saw the space for what it really was. And it was about playing up the architectural features of the space. You can paint your windows, you can accent them by making them darker than the walls, you could also make them lighter by, and make them disappear. There's endless ways to really play up or play down the architecture of your space, but identifying what you have is key. And if you've got those little knobby things and there's something really busy, silence it all one color paint. I take it literally from the baseboards all the way up to the ceiling and I just silence a lot of things. I say silence, but it's a visual. Your mind visually reads a room, whether you think about it or not, you're reading your space. And so if you don't even really see things because you've painted them all one color, then your eye no longer sees it and no longer has a visual voice. I like to focus on authentic natural materials because when you don't have a lot of things in your space, you need what you put into your space to be important. It needs to, it's going to have a visual voice. We're, we're just gonna go into the whole visual voice thing, okay? <laughs> it's something that I say all the time with my clients and when we're talking through why things are so important when you put them into a space and why it's so important when you leave something out because when you look at a space, your eye is reading what it sees. And when you have chosen really beautiful, authentic materials, you've got wood, you've got marble, you've got linen, you've got iron, you've got clay, you've got paper, there's so many materials that you can really play with that really just help your space to come alive. And so when you've paired everything back, you have less things in there, those things really do have a very important voice and a very important role in your space. So I think that playing up 
those materials is really important. And depending on your style, that's where the fun really comes in. Do you want something that feels more natural and raw? Cause then you might want to do maybe a honed marble or uh, a brushed travertine. Or if you want something that's more polished and a little bit more glamorous, you might want a polished marble. And maybe you'll have a little bit more of a sheen on everything. And that's where the style is still minimal. It's still luxurious, but it's all about you and your personal style being displayed through the materials that you're using in your space. So I really tried to focus in on beautiful, authentic materials and filling my space with something that just feels tactile. It feels like something you want to touch and it really draws you into the room and it really just will have a huge role in how you feel about your space. I think focusing on clean lines is super important. You can have a minimal luxury space and still have very traditional furniture. I personally just err on the side of modern furniture myself, but whether we're working with someone who wants to err on the side of something more traditional or something that's more uh, modern, either way, to me, the lines of everything that you put into, is, into a room are really important. So the lines of the sofa are really important. I try to choose things are, that are a little bit more pared back. You could have a moment where you just want something that's got a lot of stuff going on. Maybe, um, like I have the piece of furniture, my dresser back here, it's got the dental molding on it. It's got a little bit more or or ornamentation on it. So you might have some things in your space have a little bit more ornamentation and a little bit more busyness and something kind of going on. But generally, I think keeping things fairly clean lined will take you a long way. I think scaling up will really help you to use less things. Sometimes they do cost more. I totally, totally get it. But if you only need one or two of them, you're actually gonna save yourself money than buying 50 little things. So I say go bigger on your coffee table books, go bigger on your accessories. I like to have nice big bowls and nice big vases, and then you just don't need a lot to actually fill the space. So it really does end up saving you a lot of money in the end. So scale up and you'll need less things, but the space will feel still pared back. It's kind of crazy how that works, but it works. I promise it works. You might even just try it with the stuff that you already have. Look around and find some of your larger items, some of your larger decor items, clear your coffee table off and just practice. And take pictures with your iPhone uh, before and after. And once you start to play with it, I think you'll really kind of get the hang of why those bigger items really do feel so significant and then you just don't need as many. And how that really helps you to create a very minimal and yet luxurious look in your space. I think that limiting your color palette is key. And it doesn't mean that you have to use a black and white palette like I do. Of course, I love it when you guys wanna use my palette. <laughs> it makes me so happy that there's other people out there who enjoy a black and white space like I do. But my space isn't just black and white. It really is a palette. There's, there's creams, there's ivories, there's uh, blacks, there's grays, there's, there's a lot, there's a palette that's going on in the house. And I like that. I like having a more minimal palette. But you could just as easily have a minimal luxury style with color. You just might wanna play up mostly a navy. You might wanna mostly play up, maybe you could even use yellow or red. But I think that really focusing in on a limited number of colors will really help you to create a minimal luxury style because I think part of that is the color palette. It really is a pretty big deal. And that's why for me, I like this pared back look. I know some people feel like they're, the best day has happened when they wear a yellow dress. That is how I feel when I'm wearing black. I'm like, it is an all black day. Oh, I'm so happy. I just feel so alive. <laughs> I just love wearing black. I just love it. But you can do the same thing in your home. I think limiting your color palette limits the busyness of a space. And that's why it's so important. Using texture is really important. It's really important for this style. It's something that I had to learn as I processed through my own personal journey to minimalism. In the beginning, when I first got started, I took everything out of the room. I'm getting a beam of light on me. Okay, <laughs> you can tell the day is going. Um, but when I first started to pair my rooms back, they would a lot of times feel very cold and I couldn't figure out why they felt cold, why mine felt cold and the ones that I was seeing in the magazines and on Pinterest 
weren't cold. I realized after I looked through all the images of my own home, I really just started, I, what I did actually was that I put my own images next to the ones of these other rooms that I really admired and I realized that texture was what I was missing. So over the years, I've started to include a lot more texture into my space. So I'm more mindful that if I'm gonna have something like this, that's very clean lined and very minimal in color and texture, that I need to pair it with something like the boo clay that's got a lot more texture. The other thing is, is that like my cup, this cup has a lot more texture than one that's white and shiny. So, and let's say like this book here, like the book that's sitting here. This book has a lot more texture to it with the linen cover than one that maybe has the jacket still left on it and it's really glossy. So texture is really important and there's a lot of different ways that you can bring texture into your space. And again, it's not about budget, but it's really about identifying that you need something to warm your space up, even if it's still in your minimal palette, even if it's still in that limited palette, it can still be, it can still offer a lot of texture to your space. So great ways to add texture. Think about adding wood. Think about having something honed, honed marble or the travertine. Think about having um, even the boucle, that's a texture. You're mixing your textures. You've got something smooth and soft like velvet. You've got it sitting on something that's more linen feel. It's also about the graining. This sofa has a little bit more graining in it and so it physically, gives the eye a little bit more texture to see. Uh, you guys know I love the paper mache bowls. I love to use a textured vase. Uh, I love to buy things at garden centers. I have this amazing sphere that I got at the garden center and I cannot find anything like this. Target came out with one that was kind of similar, but it didn't have the same texture. And I'm pretty sure that I spent less on mine than they did on the one they were they had at Target. So I would prefer to go somewhere like a garden center and buy things that have like a, an actual patina to them because that will really add a lot of texture into my space. But think about it when you go to buy your coffee table, that if you have a white sofa that doesn't have very much texture going on, you may want to balance that with something that it's got a beautiful material, maybe it has a little bit more of a pattern going through it, or maybe you want to go for something more raw, like a wood table that adds a lot more texture. And this is where your personality really gets to shine in this space and where what you buy really matters because you're not gonna have very much stuff in this space. You are going to have less things that are higher quality and you wanna be sure that you remember that texture will really play a key role because there's not a lot of stuff. So what you're using now really speaks very loudly to the overall aesthetic of the entire space. I think that using sculpture and art is another key way of really creating this minimal luxury style. So you can have sculptures themselves. I love to shop. CB2 is just killing it. Oh, CB2, Crate and Barrel, and West Elm. I would say that those three places are probably my favorite three places to shop for affordable sculptures. They just have a really good selection right now. And that sculpture just really adds that sort of feeling of luxury. It's this feeling of a collected art gallery. It's somebody that appreciates art and high art, not just mass produced art, but really that sort of high feeling, something that is one of a kind. And that sort of feeling is hard to achieve when you're working on a budget, but it's not impossible. You guys know that we love to paint our own artwork. I love to create my own DIY abstracts. I've even got some DIYs on the channel if you wanna check out how I've created some of my own. But you can do a lot with your art and your sculpture to really add that sort of luxury feel into your space. Because it really does just feel more elevated when you have a sculpture and you have beautiful artwork that just feels less mass produced. And so I think that you can actually get super creative and do a lot of this on your own. And if you didn't see the tour of this entire space, I did the tour just, um, I guess it's been about a week ago. I gave, maybe a little bit longer, but I gave you a full tour of this entire space. I'll leave a link down below. And the entire room is packed with things that I found from Amazon, but I still feel like it keeps to this minimal luxury style and I was able to get everything off of Amazon just about. So it proves that you really can do a lot with very little. And yeah, again, you don't need a lot, so you can do a lot with a little. <laughs> 
also another great way of softening your space. I'm sorry, I'm trying to escape the light. <laughs> I'm just moving all around my space. I'm like, we should just have a, another sip of the coffee while we try to get the sun beam from not coming right on top of my head. <laughs> it's because it's the light of heaven coming down. <laughs> Uh, the heavens endorsement on my uh, minimal luxury style. <laughs> I wish, <laughs> I wish it worked that way. But um, yeah, so anyways, rugs are another great way of softening your space. Rugs can be very busy. And so I think that you have to kind of figure out how much busyness do you want in your space? So how much pattern do you want in your rug? I, when I first started, I, um, okay, so I have like zebra rug in there that's like really, <laughs> really bold. But the rest of the room is actually quite pared back. I have a zebra rug in my bathroom as well, but the rest of the rugs are pretty solid in the house. I don't have a lot of really super busy rugs. They can add a lot of texture. They can add pattern. They can not add pattern. They can bring your color palette in and they can really soften a space. So I love to use rugs to do that. I also think that blankets, of course, you guys know that I'm obsessed with the blankets and I, this is where my time in Scandinavia really just had such a big impact on our lives. If you haven't watched your backstory, we have a whole video if you're new to our channel. Uh, I'll leave the link for that as well. But I just think that a cozy, but didn't move. <laughs> I think that a cozy blanket can really soften up your very minimal feel in your space. And it can really just help it to feel very cozy and approachable and it feels, I mean, we live in our home. And that's what I was so stressed out about. When I first started to have a more minimal style, I almost felt like it was almost sinful. Like it was actually anti-family to have a minimal space. And I had a lot of guilt to work through when I started to create this space. And I hope none of you have any of that baggage that you have to carry with you. But my idea of what home was, was very much related back to what I was raised with. And so I felt like I was detaching myself from the idea of home. But I can assure you that um, if you watched our Amazon Live on Saturday, I was literally skipping through the living room. <laughs> it's like, yay, it's almost turtleneck season. Uh, we skip around and we dance and we play and we lay on the sofa and we read books and we are very much a family in, in our space. And so I hope that this this video has just empowered you to feel like if you love a minimal luxury style, you can achieve that on any budget. And so check down below in the links. I always leave links for any of the pictures or the items that I featured in the video. Uh, I use a lot of images from Pinterest, but if it's anywhere else, I go through and I, I link it up for you. So that way, if you're wanting to shop for specific items or if you want to see more, go check out my Pinterest if you haven't already, because it is loaded with visuals for this style and I cannot get enough of it. Also don't forget about my discount code with Beam. Click below and use my code HOUSE to get 35% off your first order when you subscribe and then 20% off all following orders. Plus don't forget when you subscribe to Dream Powder you never have to pay for shipping and you'll receive the Beam mug and brother with your first order. So you'll have everything you need to get started. Don't forget, you can also pause, skip, or cancel anytime so there's no risk. It's available for new and existing customers. I hope that you love the video. I hope you'll hit subscribe and uh, come back to visit us very soon. So thank you again, and I will see you in the next one.